Vintage is so in right now. Furniture, artwork, clothes. It's because they don't make them like they used to. I know, isn't that a shame? Are we vintage? Oh, I hope not. <laughs> Jump into our time machine as we take you back to the good old days today on Su Vida Especial. I'm JR Cardenas. And I'm Vanessa Ramirez. We're at Past, a really cool vintage shop in downtown Mesa. You know, at this very moment, Vanessa, I wish I wouldn't have cleaned out my garage. I doubt you had stuff like this in your garage, JR. Well, the collection here at Past is a labor of love. They work hard to find interesting and unique items from decades ago. We started Past about three years ago. We're four best friends. We grew up working at Antique Plaza, which is our sister store two doors down. In high school and college, we were all together. We had a passion for vintage, and we thought we would open a store together. One of the questions we often get is, what's the difference between antique and vintage? It may vary depending on who you ask, but we basically believe that antique is when it's 100 years or older, whereas vintage is anywhere in that 20 to 100 year mark. One of the great things about vintage is you don't have to use what that item specifically was made for. So you could use a ladder maybe as a display or a dresser as a changing table for your child. A card catalog could become a jewelry display or organizer as well. Or an army cot could become a bench inside your entryway. One of the things I love about working here and owning this shop is helping people find the right piece for their spot. And I use my design eye to try to figure out the piece that would work well with your existing pieces to make sure that it can incorporate in their home while still bringing that vintage flair. We get customers from every age group. It's becoming more and more popular to bring it into your home. A little piece here or there when you're decorating your first apartment or your house. We get a lot of interior designers looking for a unique piece that they can't find at the big box store. And I think their clients really appreciate to have something unique and of their own that no one else has. It's great when you have kids coming in with their adults. We have um, old typewriters that we get to kind of show them and tell them how it's used. And even cameras with lenses and film and old photographs, black and white photographs. It's kind of neat to see that. I think a good starter vintage item is some of our quirkier pieces like a little brass animal or a little kind of maybe strange but adorable framed portrait where it just adds something unique and quirky to your house that might have more big box items in it. It just helps you stand out from your friends. One of the reasons I like coming to work here at PAST is I get to work with three of my best friends. Um, after a long week at our full-time jobs, we get to come here, create, play, and shop and um, it's just kind of a great thing to do all together. I love being a co-owner of this shop, and one of the things I love is meeting people from all over the world. We've had customers from Japan, from Europe, and obviously different states in the United States as well that just travel the country looking for items that they just can't find in their hometown. So we invite you to come down to Pass in Antique Plaza and spend the day with us. To find your next vintage treasure. So, Jair, I don't know if you're antique or vintage. Well, I'd like to consider myself more as a collectible, Vanessa. We'll be back with more Suvida Especial right after this. Huh, interesting. Suvida is brought to you by Chicanos por la Causa. Join the cause for change. Welcome back to Suvida Especial, where today everything old is new again. We're at Past Vintage Shop, where the right touch of old can make your space feel new. Yes, we're talking vintage fashion, furniture, and even hotels, and we've got a few of those here in Arizona. For example, the Hotel Valley Ho, Vanessa, where mid-century modern architecture meets cool and contemporary. The hotel was built in 1956. It was the brainchild of primarily three people that owned and operated the Westward Ho in downtown Phoenix, uh, John Mills and Robert Neville and Fail. It was a very high-end hotel, uh, very much like it is again today. When you look at the hotel, when you drive up to the hotel, one of the first things you notice 
are the 300 plus pound poured concrete panels, which really gives a hotel, in my opinion, its signature look. Back in 1956, this hotel was a huge draw for big names from Hollywood. Robert Wagner and Natalie Wood had their first wedding reception here. It was a huge Hollywood party. Tony Curtis and Janet Lee were guests of the hotel. As a matter of fact, Jimmy Durante, he was a frequent guest of the hotel as well. I am sure there were many other Hollywood stars that stayed here because Scottsdale was becoming known as a place to, to be. The modernist movement at the time, mid-century architecture, was experimental. These architects were trying new things and very exciting, cutting-edge type of architecture. The preservation of mid-century architecture, I think, is extremely important, a good mid-century architecture. For one thing, it's good for the environment. They estimate they saved over 30,000 tons of debris from going to a landfill by preserving this hotel and not tearing it down. That being said, when you walk into the lobby, there is a fabulous fireplace that is all new to the renovation. And in the basin is heat tempered glass, which is very expensive if you went out to buy it. However, while the hotel was under renovation, one of the large bay windows fell out that's heat tempered glass. They processed it, that's the glass that's in the fireplace. And I just think that is extremely cool. With the interior design, the furniture and all that they used, they were extremely careful to pay tribute. None of it's a knockoff. The lobby itself is pretty much original, what you would have seen in 1956. As a matter of fact, this is sometimes referred to as the Jetsons in the desert. We would like to invite you to see the hotel up close and personal. We offer the Magical History Tour, which is 1956 a person, the year the hotel opened. And all you have to do is contact the hotel and I will do the tours. Isn't it awesome that this great architecture is preserved and celebrated, particularly their pools? Oh, I love their pool during the summer. Okay, so how about another old hotel here in the valley? Chandler residents know it as Hotel San Marcos. My name is Nate Myers. I'm the curator of collections here at the Chandler Museum. I've been the curator of collections here at the Chandler Museum for over 10 years. It's really exciting to me to be one of the few people who gets to, to not only find out that history, but then share it with the community here at the museum. There's a lot of history here in Chandler, Arizona, and that history, a lot of it centers around the San Marcos Hotel in downtown Chandler. Dr. Alexander Chandler founded the town of Chandler in 1912, and the San Marcos Hotel opened up at the center of the community one year later. Dr. Chandler was a, an excellent salesman. He really sold the San Marcos. He sold the weather around the San Marcos. He sold the views. The hotel had electricity in every room, which was a big deal in 1913. It had a telephone line in every room. And he promoted the fact that you could sit in your hotel room here in Chandler in the middle of the winter and call your friend in New York City and brag to them about what great weather you were having while they were getting snowed on and freezing. When you arrived, you were greeted by bellhops who would put your suitcases on bicycles and ride them off to your guest quarters. You would stay in your guest quarters for weeks at a time. You'd rent it out for the season and you'd have a whole package of, of activities and dining options that you'd buy for the season. Or you could go play golf on the first grass golf course in the state of Arizona. The rich and famous from across the United States would spend their winters here in Chandler at the San Marcos. Flipping back through the archives of the hotel, which we hold here at the museum, you'll find guest cards from people like Jimmy Stewart, Errol Flynn, who honeymooned at the San Marcos with his wife Nora Eddington, Herbert Hoover, the president, wealthy industrialists, and names that we'd recognize today like Coors and Pabst as well as the designer Christian Dior would spend their winters here. Without the San Marcos Hotel, I don't think Chandler wouldn't be the community it is today. It may never have been founded in the first place. The idea that Dr. Chandler had for 
Chandler for his town was that it would be uh, modeled after Pasadena, California, which was a resort town surrounded by industrial agriculture. And the San Marcos was at the center of that plan for Chandler. The San Marcos today reflects its history. You walk into the lobby and a lot of the original features of the lobby are still there. The desk is where it was. There's a, the fireplace is where it was, the grand staircase. The pillars are all part of the original design. If you want to visit the San Marcos, it's at one San Marcos place in downtown Chandler. You can visit them at sanmarcosresort.com. To learn more about Chandler's history in general, visit the Chandler Museum at 300 South Chandler Village Drive or at chandlermuseum.org. Vanessa, these hotels are great places to visit, even if you don't spend the night. Yeah, it's a great place to visit, enjoy the atmosphere, and take in all that wonderful history. Hmm, history. If walls could talk, mm. they say we'd be right back after these messages. Yeah. So Vida is brought to you in part by Mega 104.3 and 101.1 The Beat. Welcome back to Su Vida Especial. I'm Vanessa Ramirez. And I'm J.R. Cardenas. Now, believe it or not, every once in a while, they ask us to host events. Mm -hmm. It happens quite a bit, actually. And some of these events are red carpet events, which means it's time to go shopping. But not just anywhere. So when you're looking for that top-notch piece, mm -hmm. it's time to head out to the Scottsdale Arts District and visit Fashions by Robert Black. Take a look. Well, I, my background was in fashion, so I owned an agency, Ford Robert Black Agency, that we, um, or I sold 15 years ago. And I always worked with designers and fashion designers. And I had a really good friend, Doreen Pacern, who was a fashionista, and we used to shop vintage all over the country. Um, I had sold my company, and we said, let's do a retail store and let's do vintage, but let's do it the way we like to shop vintage. And what that means is we really respect the clothes, we really appreciate the clothes, so we wanted to make sure that when we presented them to our clients, they were ready to be worn and they were in tip-top shape. So we, um, we opened nine and a half years ago and we didn't know if it would be successful. We did not know if the community would embrace what we saw and what our vision was, but apparently they did because here we are. In my experience with vintage, I find that people have a real interest in nostalgia, number one, but they also have an interest in quality. And the thing that I find very interesting with these clothes is when we get a piece in, one of the very first things we do is we turn it inside out. We want to look at the construction and the quality of construction. And the reason we still have these items around is they were made so much better than the clothing is made today. We all hear about fast fashion, and that is actually a fact. It's a reality. But in the day, even a dress that a that your mom made at home, she was a great seamstress. And she sat at her machine, she did it by hand, she did it off of a pattern that could have been a Hollywood designer or a Vogue magazine pattern, and created a really beautiful piece. Fabrics were also stronger, they were pure. They weren't mixed, they weren't synthetic, we didn't have um, any stretch to them, you know, there was nothing like that. So everything is well preserved at this point, and just the quality is better. And I think that's what people really look at too. One of the things I really enjoy about this store are the people that come in with the clothing. And 90% of the merchandise that we acquire and we purchase it um, comes from the original owner. So I've had a hundred year old the little gal come in with a few treasures and, and just a variety of people. But recently I had a gentleman come in that brought some of his um, wife's things in and unfortunately she had passed. And um, as we started talking to him, he had some really interesting pieces and they were, they were much older than the 40s and 50s. And as we talked to him, we discovered that his wife was an actress in Hollywood and actually relatively prominent and he was in the industry as well as a dancer. He pulled out his phone and we started looking at the photographs of them and the stars that they were with of the day and I was just blown away and we sat and talked for probably two hours and to us that's the real treasure is when we get somebody and they can tell us about what their lives were and what these clothes meant to them and our job then as the stewards of the clothes is to give them a new life and find that new owner that then takes them to the next party you know and that's truly how we look at it so it's it's not just a retail store for us there's a lot more to it you know, Jerry, they have such a great selection there, but what makes that place extra special is you'll never know who you'll see there. They have celebrities that shop there. Really? Yeah. Wow, it's crazy. Well, if you want to see more of these celebrities, <laughs> we'll be right back with more Subida right after these messages. 
Vanessa, who's your new friend? Oh, this is Oink Oink. Oh, you guys make a cute couple. Mm -hmm. You want some lingua for lunch? I'm good, thank you. Okay. Hey, uh, welcome to the past. Past vintage shop, that is. Mm -hmm. They have an incredible selection of furniture, art, decor items, and just about everything you need to give your home a little touch of vintage. You know, some people are okay with a little touch, mm -hmm. and others go all in. Either way, we've got you covered here at Past Vintage Shop. That's right. So, Dreyer, we've talked about vintage hotels and fashion. Well, what about cars? Who doesn't love a classic car? Rum, rum. And our friend Bogey from the TV show All Girls Garage, remember her? Yes, I love her. We did a show from her garage here in Phoenix while she's leading a team of all-female mechanics to restore this genuine classic. Check it out. Mm, impressive. So I'm a master mechanic by trade. I've been a repair shop owner for about 12 years and a mechanic for 20 years. And as a woman coming up in the industry, I definitely experienced a lot of challenges. There weren't a lot of open doors for me to get into the industry. And then once I was in the industry, I always felt like an only. Women make up about 2.4% of all automotive tradespeople. So most of the professional women who are out there, they're used to being the only one that they know. And I've, I've become very passionate about connecting these women to each other to support one another and encourage each other. I think we're losing a lot of people from the industry because they don't have the support, they don't have the connection. And so we are launching our next all-female build. So two years ago, we did an all-female build that unveiled at SEMA 2017. And that was a 1957 Chevy pickup truck that we did with all women. We had 90 women from 23 different states who came together to build this thing. And about 30% of them had never worked on a vehicle before ever. So it was all about inviting new women into the industry and really celebrating the women who are in the industry already. And we've decided to do it again. So tonight is the launch party and kickoff for that. We have a new vehicle that we're going to be building. We're inviting newbies from all over the country again to come and participate and try out the trades and see if it's something that they enjoy doing, see if, if they like it. We're very excited to announce it is actually an unusual car that we're doing. It's a 1961 Volvo PV544. A lot of people have never heard of this. It's a goofy car, but we kind of like that because we've decided that rather than doing kind of the same cars that everybody else does, Part of the whole point of this is to attract attention for women in the trades, right? So when we did the Chevy, we put a BMW engine in it so that people go, huh? And then we get to have a conversation with them about women in the trades. So this Volvo is gonna do the same thing. People are gonna walk by it, we're gonna do some cool modifications to it, and when they're gonna walk by it, I'm like, what is that? And that's exactly the response that we want. So this new build is actually going to be unveiled at SEMA 2020. And if you're not familiar, SEMA is like the Super Bowl of car shows. It happens every year, the first week of November. So we've decided to give ourselves two years to do this project so we can invite more women in to participate. And so we got a two year process. SEMA 2020 is the end date that it'll be unveiled and we're super excited to share it with y'all. So best way to find out about the build is through social media uh, at, at Bogey's Garage. So Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at Bogey's Garage. Also website is www.bogeysgarage.com. So super easy, just remember Bogey's Garage and you'll find us. And we'll be uh, announcing information over the next couple of months about how to get involved, whether you're a professional or whether you have no experience but you've always wanted to learn, we want you to come down and be a part of this and come play in this car with us. You know the car they're working on? Uh -huh. It actually belongs to Carlos Chavez, one of our story producers. Really? Yeah, the Carlos Chavez. What a lucky guy. Can't wait to see how that turns out. Yeah. You know, Bogey's my hero. And if you want to meet some other heroes, we have the best place for you to check them out. Want to go, Oink Oink? My name is Stephen Hill. I'm the director and curator of the Hills of Casa Grande Pioneer Heroes Museum. This uh, collection was started by my father, Roland Hill, who used to travel with my mother and I to Arizona in the early days. It represents his life passion. He loved history, he loved uh, costume and clothing. Being in the movie business, it was something he was used to. But to see actual artifacts and touch real pieces from the period was exciting to him. So we have them on display here. It's really a life passion that has transformed itself into a workable business that can bring a lot of joy to, to people to see the actual history of this area on living mannequins, uh, you know, cl clothing that was actually worn during the period. He's uh, passed, he's no longer uh, with us, 
but I think that uh, we do honor to this collection and his work if we show it. That's what motivates me to do this business. And I think that when someone does something that personal in their life and that special and they love what they do, if you can share it with the world, it's, it's a, good, a good thing. When people uh, come in, they are, I think, just blown away by our collection in part because it's something that I don't think you can see anywhere else. We have pieces here that uh, I've never seen even in, at the Smithsonian. It's a chance for this community and the state of Arizona to really experience something unique. When grade school kids come in, they really get excited about our dinosaur eggs, our dinosaur skull, and uh, woolly mammoth bones that we have. We also have probably one of the best collections in Arizona of effigies and, and carved figures uh, from the Mayan, Aztecs, and the Hohokam. Some of the pieces are 2,000 years old. We have a mummy that uh, we believe rode with Coronado in 1540. And we have an, a uniform that we think was worn by Napoleon in 1814. The interesting thing is if you compare this jacket to a portrait of Napoleon that he wore when he started the French Revolution in 1789, you'll see that it may very well be the same exact coat. The only thing different is that the red collar has been modified to make it more uh, contemporary with the 1814 fashions. We have an LDS room and the reason for that is that the LDS people were some of the first European settlers in Arizona. Uh, Brigham Young actually sent the first detachment of Mormons to Arizona. They brought with them a portrait and we believe it's the oldest portrait of Joseph Smith yet found. It's dated March 27, 1836. Now we think it was done at the time that he dedicated the Kirtland, Ohio Temple. It is a really unique piece that should be viewed, I think, by anyone who is interested in the history of Arizona. Well, I would like to invite everyone who would like to come and see uh, this collection to come visit our place. We're at 317 West 4th Street in Casa Grande, and you just call ahead for an appointment. We can schedule same-day appointments if you'd like, just not to be missed. It's an amazing collection, especially if you love history. That's quite a collection at the museum. You should definitely pay them a visit. Yes, and you'll also find an incredible collection here at PASS. However, this place is not a museum. You no. can take everything in here home with you today. Mm -hmm. You know, PASS is one of the many businesses you'll find here in downtown Mesa. Uh -huh. So you should definitely pay them a visit. In fact, it's a great place to spend an afternoon. Mm -hmm. Bring a date. Oh, or maybe bring your friends. Eat, drink, and shop till you drop. We'll see you next time on Subida, Subida Especial. Especial. So what are you taking home today?